yes, you know what it is, man. DJ Doctor on the ones and twos handling business, of course. Doing it like he always does, just killing the sets. You know what it is, man. Now, of course, the way we're brought up indeed does have an impact on the way we grow as individuals. We have a lot of trials and tricks. But each step we take out of those situations allows us to learn and to grow and be stronger individuals. Tonight I present to you an individual who's managed to take many a negative and turn it into positive experiences. From the streets in the jail cell, all the way to an honor roll and nationally known motivative speaker, community service provider, and founder of Keys, which is knowledge and effort yield success. And of course, he's the youngest to be named top 25 under 25 by the Canadian Immigrant Magazine. Just for good mention, he's also one of the first and newly minted torchbearers for this summer's Pan American Games in Toronto. We present to you the one and only Mr. Francis Atta. Welcome to Royalty Radio, my man. Thank, Thank you so much. For sure. I mean, talking about the you know being a torchbearer just recently, you just named that uh, yesterday actually uh, for the Pan American Games. Um, I mean, what was that? You know, what was going through your mind? How did you uh, get wind of this information? Actually? Man, it was it was honestly it was a uh, it was a beautiful story because what happened was that I won this award from the city of Toronto called the Identify and Impact Award. And I thank the city of Toronto for recognizing me for the work that I do. And then they just they, they shoot me an email. They're like, "Hey, Francis, do you want to be a torchbearer for the city um, for the city of Toronto for the Pan Am Games?" I'm like, "Hell yeah, for sure, put me on." <laughs> and so you know, and they did. You know, we just. We spoke a little bit. They got to know a little bit about me. Right. I sent them my media release kit, and they liked it. And they're like, you know, all right, we're gonna put you on. And after I'm like, you know, I was happy. I'm like, yeah, let's do this. You know what I mean? Because I I knew what it meant. You know what I mean? So I, I was happy for that. For sure. What does it mean to you? Well, for me, it, it, it means something really special because the Pan Am Games don't happen in Canada often, right? <laughs> very, very. And so you know, yeah. for me, it just means that I get to inspire um, a, a lot of youth in the city of Toronto and just a, a lot of people in general. And just for me. That it's not only about Jane and Finch, you know, it's about right. all the priority neighborhoods, it's about all the kids that's, that's been in my shoes, all the kids that are struggling, everybody that's struggling, everybody that hit rock bottom, everybody that feels like giving up. Like, I just feel like when I'm up there with the flame, like, it's like this is for all of us, just showing them that look where I came from and look where you could be as well, too, you know. Right. Like, the story that I'm on is like a story that we're all on together. Like, you know, when we see one person making it, it's like I'm not trying to make it for myself, I'm trying to make it for each and every one of us. So, this is a beautiful, a beautiful struggle for each and every every one of us is going to be a beautiful story at the end of the day for sure for sure for sure now I mean talking about stories man let's talk about your story <laughs> for sure I mean you know going all the way back to uh, when you first came here in the first mm -hmm. your background is getting yet yes sir oh, right, all right. and what at what age did you come to the country I came here when I was six years old you know I was so blessed to be able to come here and get this opportunity to to make some to make some out of my life you know what i mean i thank my mom and dad working so hard you know i took a i took a trip to ghana about two years ago and i was able to you know to reconnect with my roots and to just be able to volunteer in some orphanage and i was just so appreciative of just being able to come to canada and take advantage of the opportunity that we have and a lot of brothers and sisters is up here they're not really doing that kind of stuff so you know for me being in canada this beautiful this beautiful country is just so much opportunities that you can see like even being a toys barrier i'm representing my um ghana and of course i'm representing canada too so it's beautiful definitely man mm -hmm. definitely and of course you you're also an author yes You've sir in a book yes sir titled the flip mm -hmm. um you know that does tell some of the story as to how you began and all the struggles that you went through yes um Talk to me about that book. I mean, what was the inspiration behind it? Man, that book is my baby, man. I'm telling you, the flip is my baby, you know what I mean? Like, honestly, I had to work hard for that book. I had to grind out, you know what I mean? Like, never in my life would I, I, I ever felt, felt that I was going to write a book. Like, if you ever ask any of my teachers growing up, they'll tell you that I was, like, least expected to write a book, you know? <laughs> ever growing up in high school, I was getting the worst marks, and you know what I mean? And I just happened to change my life around when I got in trouble with the law, and you know? And I felt like I hit rock bottom, and, like, I was just thinking one day, I was 18 years old, but, I, I, like, my life wasn't going anywhere for me, and, like, you know what I mean? I was I wasn't I was doing nothing with my life, and I didn't want to be a loser growing up, you know? I was just thinking about right. my unborn kids, that one day when I have kids, I don't want my kids to, to struggle, like right. how I went through, and I just said, you know what? I got to do something about my life. I got to change something, so, you know what I mean? To tell you the truth, and this might sound like a cliche a lot of people think it's a cliche but I went to church I started going to church and right. I started connecting with positive people and I left my friends behind because the friends that I was I was with at the, at the time like 
it just seems that we always used to just stomp on each other go each other's goals and every time we wanted to do something positive we always put each other down you know what i'm saying it's right. like even if one person went to montreal to go play football we'd be like yo come on man what are you doing you're gonna come back like come on you know you suck and those kind of stuff oh, that we're saying right. to each other right. it was kind of killing us but we didn't know we thought it was funny but it was right. nothing funny about that right yeah. so like you know i just started connecting with some positive people and I and I changed my life around, and just for the time that I was focused on God, it, it, it helped me to focus on my life and get my life back on track. And I went to school, and I just you know, and when I went to school, and I just went to volunteer my old high school, and I seen just a lot of youth that were going down the wrong path, the same path that I was on, and I was just so sad just seeing these youth, and the, all they were just focused on was playing basketball. I was just seeing these youth, and all those focused on is selling drugs, and you know what I mean. And it right. just kind of remind me like back in the days, like the things that we were going through growing up, and you know, just like. The um the the OGs like you know when we're on the block and you know they see they, they used to see us and they used to tell us yo you guys shouldn't be on the block and you right. know, this block is not good for you, you know right. so I thought that by them um g- g- by them speaking to me like that it w- I was able to go and speak to these kids you know because I was uh, fortunate to get that information so I'm like why not pass this information to right. the other kids that's coming up in in the in the next generation for sure for sure now going back I guess just touching a bit on uh in terms of high school. Yes, sir. What was your experience like in high school? I mean, I know that, you know, based on the book, you know, a lot of people read the book. You were a baller. Just yeah, like man, I was others. a baller, man. Honestly, man, high school was, it was beautiful, to tell you the truth. But you know what I mean? Like, just my grades wasn't good. Right. I was always uh, <clears throat> a polite kid, you know. I, just, I never wanted to hurt anybody. But my grades were horrible. Like, you know, I spent all my time playing basketball. Like, all I did was play basketball each and every day. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just finish work at 2 o'clock in the morning from Dave and Buster's and you'll see me outside in Jane and Finn just shooting hoops right. and the security guards in the back just with his lights on and I'm just shooting pure jumpers and I finish shooting hoops and I just go run around, run around the whole neighborhood and stuff like that. Like I wasted all my time playing basketball but basketball was the same thing that saved me. That was my, my refuge. That was my outlet. Every time I, you know, I was angry. Every time like, you know, I, I, I couldn't think properly. I just go right. to the basketball court and I just start shooting, right? So even though basketball took up half of my time in high school, Right. I really wish that I, I, I had a balance, you know what I mean? Because right. I didn't have no balance to so, um, education and sports. I didn't have that kind of balance. I didn't have that kind of role model that, that sat me down and said, Francis, listen, you know what I'm saying? Like, you could play ball, mm-hmm. but you also have to focus on school. The right. same energy you put in school, that's the same energy you should put on the basketball court. Right. You know what I mean? Somebody just came to me and just, and just spoke to me in that kind of way, man. It would have it would have changed my life. Like, you know, I'm, I'm not mad at my life. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, this is a path that, like, you know what I mean? Now, definitely yeah, not. this is the path that God chose for me. So, I'm not yeah. mad at my, I'm not, not mad about the path. But, you know, I'm just saying I could have been in the NBA right now. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> that's all I'm saying, man. Definitely, yeah, man, definitely. Uh, but then again, I guess based on that, I mean, do you think that, <clears throat> let's just say, unfortunately you didn't have anybody to, you know, show you the way or anything like mm-hmm. that. But if you did have someone to show you the way and you were able to make it through, do you think that you would still have the same impact you do now? I don't think so. I don't think so because I'll be probably just playing sports and stuff like that. So, you know, right. like this is my calling. I'm, I'm so comfortable in my calling. Like, you know, I feel good when I go out and speak and just be able to share my story with people. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, just everybody has a different definition of success. Like, you know, mm-hmm. so to some people it's money, to some people it's impact. And right. I thank God that I was able to go the impact road and the, the impact way because when you die, you can't take all that money with you. But people sure. will always remember the impact that you made in the world. Amen to that. For Straight sure, up. Sure. Getting back to the flip, of course, it's uh, it was well written, uniquely written, of course, a motivational mm-hmm. and inspirational book for children. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, on one side of it, and then on the other side, of course, it's uh, advice for parents. Yes, as well, sir. Right? Um, how therapeutic was it? You know, I mean, you're writing about your life. Yes, sir. You know, putting it out there for the world to see when you were or to read actually but mm-hmm. um, you know how was it for you putting it out there what were the, some of the things that were going through your mind at the time of writing <laughs> you know it's so funny that you asked me that question because you know because I even have some videos on YouTube right now and like when I go back and I watch them like I can't believe I was like like that like you know what I'm saying so it's like I have the book right now and I'm just thinking about when I get older, about five years, ten years down the line, uh, one of my friends came up to me and told me this. He's like, you're going to be like, yo, I can't, you're going to be like, I can't believe you wrote that kind of stuff in the book. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's what my right. friends are telling me. But, you know, honestly, like, my story, like, like I said, like, everybody has a path and this is my path. Like, God told me, like, you know, share your story with people. Right. Try to change people, help people through the struggle. Let them see that, you know, they could do the same thing that you're doing. Because to me, like, everything I'm doing is doable for everybody. Right. Everything I'm doing, everybody could do it if they... You know, if they want to do it, I just work hard. I don't have no secret. I right. just work hard. I just stay up late. I read late. I, st- I 
everything. I'm on the computer late. I just work hard. That's all I do. There's no secret. Everybody's always going around looking for the secret to success. We're going to end up buying the secret to success. Listen to all this <laughs> stuff, secret to success. There is no secret to success. You ain't finding it because there's nothing there. It's called hard work. Right. A lot of people are just scared of it. There is no secret. Okay. Keeping it real, man. Straight up. Knowledge and effort yield success. Yes, sir. Talk to me about that. That was my first organization. I was inspired to do that organization by one of my, my good friend, Mr. Paul Razzo, okay. who was one of my teachers that I used to hate. <laughs> I used to hate that teacher. You used to hate with a passion. I bought a passion. It's, it's a strong word, you know. But it's a beautiful story at the end because... Mr. Paul Razzo was the only teacher that ever challenged me in James Carter Mogul again. And okay. every time I used to come there, I used to have this basketball attitude. Like, I ran the school. Like, all the kids right now, right. when you walk in the school, like they, they run the school like because right. they play ball. Right? I was one of those kids. And when I came to class, Mr. Razzo was like, Francis, if you think you're going to come to my class and not do any work, you're crazy. You're not playing basketball. And as the only teacher, he challenged me. I'm like, yo, who does this teacher think he is? <laughs> you know what I mean? But little did I know that he had his little plans and he was about to take me on the basketball team. So every time I used to come to class, right. I used to just take my work and I used to sit on the other side of class, right. put my hoodie on and just do my work. And that was the only class in high school that I finished with a 73% because of Mr. Razzo. Right. And the funny thing is when I wanted to volunteer in Maguigan, mm -hmm. I went to Mr. Razzo and, you know, and I was older and, you know, he was talking to me about volunteering and stuff like that. And I was speaking to the kids. He's like, yo, Francis, yo, you're a very good speaker. You start your own company. Right. right? And after, you know, I'm like, all right, all right. So I went, I went home, you know, I'm just thinking about my company name. I'm in the shower. I don't know. I just feel like I, I think better in the shower. <laughs> you know, I don't <laughs> know. Is it just me? I, was like, I just think better in the shower. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And I'm just thinking about, I'm like, yo, like, yo, what opens doors? I'm like, you know, keys open doors. I'm like, right. yo, let me try to think about acronyms for keys. And I was thinking about all these acronyms and knowledge and effort of success. And I went online and other people had my name and stuff. I'm like, right. damn, I got to change this up. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I asked Mr. Raz and he, he helped me, you know. So that teacher that I hated in high school, he's the same teacher that helped me start my organization. And he's the same teacher that's my best friend right now. And we have dinner and we talk about business and everything together. And he's trying his own company. Um, okay. Just trying to, because he feels like, he started his own company about school, okay. right? So just right. helping people um, use the ed education um, better um, to their advantage. So, you know, I thank Mr. Razzle for that. He for started sure. Keys and my motivational speaking company and my everything I do, workshops. So I thank Mr. Razzle for everything. Definitely, man, definitely. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, I, that, it's, key, it's easy to see that he's one of the main influences <coughs> yes. uh, parent-wise. How are your parents in terms of influences? Man, my parents were amazing. You know, some people, like, they hate their parents for being so mean to them and being right. so hard on them. But, you know, like, I thank my parents. Like, you know, even, like, when we're in school, right, we used to hate the teachers that were right, right in our right. face. Yeah. But as you got older, you got to know that those are the teachers that really care about you. Because right. if you're in your Blackberry or if you're sitting in the back of the class and if you're not doing nothing and the teacher doesn't regulate you, then you know that teacher don't care about you, right? right? right. <clears throat> the same thing I got to do with your parents. Like, you know, like, my parents were so, like, hard on me, like, I couldn't even go outside, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> I couldn't even go outside. Like, I couldn't yeah. even, like, my my dad had me on lock. Right. Like, I had to ask him everywhere I had to go. Yeah. If I was going to the gym, if I was going outside to throw the garbage, like, you know, my dad, he just had me, like, you know, he taught me so much stuff, so, you know what I mean? So, my, my dad was hard on me, you know, and, and, I, and I'm a grown man, and I could do everything. I, I could cook, I could clean, like, right. I'm a clean freak, like, you know, so I, I thank my dad for all that kind of stuff. So, you know, as hard as he was on us, he had 14 kids, you know right. what I mean? He had 14 kids, so, you know, I was so lucky to be raised with, with my family, such such a amazing a, amazing family that I have, so, you know what I mean? So, just thank my dad, shout out to my dad and my mom for all the hard work that, you know, that they do for each and every one of us. For sure, for sure. In the book, uh, you did speak at length about the relationship with your mom. Yes. Right? Uh, you did state that, you know, sometimes it was really hard, difficult. You know, yes. You tried to figure out whether or not, you know, she mm -hmm. loved you or not based on the way that she, she treated you, right? Yes. So that was a bit of a problem, but, you know, you managed to overcome it. Yes. Sometimes the parents, you know, may be harsh. They may think that giving tough love mm -hmm. is one of those things that, you know, you need to grow up and, and realize that. But do you think that, you know, that's the way to go in terms of parenting. I mean, I know you're not you mm -hmm. may, you're not a parent at the moment, but based yeah. on your experiences, I work with a lot, I work with a lot, a lot of kids, so I think I'm a parent. So, okay. yeah. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. But that's one of my my goals in life. One day to right. be a foster parent. But you know, t tough love is needed. You know, what I mean, yeah. tough love. If there's no tough love, like you're gonna be like going in the wrong direction. Because I see a lot of kids right now that need that need a lot of tough love. Like you know, what I'm right. saying so. 
you know, my parents give me that kind of tough love. It made me a tough man. Like, you know, it, it made me that the struggles in life and we had to overcome it, right? Because, like, we, we were living in a party neighborhood. Like, we weren't living in paradise. Like, you know what right. I mean? So we, we were raised tough. Mm -hmm. We were raised, like, you know, to be able to go through hard times and struggles. So if my parents didn't raise me the way they raised me, right. like, if, if we didn't have, like, when we didn't have anything, how my dad taught me how to be tough, how to survive, how to just take whatever we had and to just make a meal, like, then I wouldn't be here today. Like, you right. know what I mean? So, so they they raise us tough. So I thank them for that. You know what I mean. So for tough sure. love is definitely definitely needed. For sure, for sure. Now, of course, you've been working on a lot of things. Uh, you know, you, you brought out uh, a video last month, "The Promise to Myself." Yes. And of course, tonight we're going to be playing one of your tracks that you've just decided to greatness. release today. Greatness. Talk about it. Oh man, greatness, man. I was. You know what? Shout out to Eric Thomas. You know what I mean. I met Eric Thomas on uh, the motivational speaker. I met him at. The Mississauga Center, like we 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 spoke on the same stage, and you know, and I saw Eric Thomas, and I'm like, yo, ET, yeah. I'm like, yo, ET, yo, I'm like, all I want you to do is take my book. All I want you to do is just, you know, let me come to your show one day. Let me open up for you, you know. Right. You don't you don't gotta pay for my plane ticket. You don't gotta pay for my hotel. You don't gotta pay for anything. Let me just come out there and let me just open for you. That's all I want. You know what I mean? Right. I just told him that. You know what I mean? So I'm still waiting for a call from my man Eric Thomas. I told him I'm coming for a spot all on right. Twitter. I let him know that. Shout you know out. what I mean? So shout out to Eric Thomas. You know he better be on his grind. You know uh -huh. in Detroit. You know what I'm spot. saying? So you know. So I I I. The, um, the motivational mixtape that I'm, I'm gonna be releasing in April is called the Average Joe Motivational Mixtape, okay. and it's like I got the idea because I know a lot of youth they like to listen to a lot of music. Like music runs the world, and I'm mm -hmm. you know what I mean. And I'm not a rapper, so I'm like I I see the influence of music, so I'm like let me do something with music. So mm -hmm. what I did is I got beats, uplifting beats, okay. and and I spoke positively on it, right? right? So and I called it the Average Joe Motivational Mixtape, and I just talk about things. So I want to help people not to be content with being average. Okay, and greatness. Greatness is um, I wrote that track You know I was just whew, Just thinking about You know all the, th all the things that We thought that we could do You right. know what I mean And how great that we are That we don't even know How great that we are You know what I mean That like we're beyond we, we, we're, we're beyond like Like anything that, that That we think we can do Community is very important And giving back We always talk about Giving back to the community Yes sir um, For you personally You know going through The things that you've gone through And coming out of them How important is it for you To give back each time Man, it's so important. Like you know, I'm I'm, I'm the last one not to give it back. Cause you know, even like even when I was a kid, like people were giving back to me. Cause I remember when we used to go to school and we used to sell those chocolates and we used to have those sponsor sheets and I used right. to keep the sponsor sheets <laughs> 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 and I used to keep those sponsor sheets and I used to <laughs> bring it door to door myself and I used right. to get sponsors and I used to. That's how I bought my first N one basketball shoes by doing okay. that. And you know what I mean? And so you know, when I see kids in the mall, when I see kids doing the same thing, right. I know what they're on. You know what I mean? Definitely. And I just I make sure I give back any way that I can. You know, I believe in um I believe in volunteering. I feel like volunteer if you want to get to any organization, volunteering is one of the best ways. And you know, it's a, people always hate volunteering, but go right. out there, volunteer, help people out. Like you know, that's what the world's about. Like go out and help people. Like you know what I mean? There's so much people that are bored every single day. Like go out there and volunteer. There's so much right. kids that that need your help, that need your talent. And one thing that I believe in is. Like when you make it out the hood and you become successful, mm -hmm. make sure you come back to your hood and you make sure you give back to your hood, man. Cause you know there's kids out there that's begging for help right there. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of people they just make it and they just forget about their neighborhoods, and that's so so wrong and right. every different level. You know what I'm saying? That's true. So big up to everybody that does come back and you know support the hood. For sure, for sure. Now just you know, name a few charities out there that you're supporting that you you know you're helping. Um, right now I'm helping an organization in Ghana called the JD the the JD's um foundation is a is an orphanage in Ghana. When I went okay. to Ghana two years ago, right. I went there and I volunteered there and I just made a beautiful bond with the kids and you know I helped them build a store oh, nice. um, so that they could generate money and I was there and I was doing workshops and all this kind of stuff and like you know the kids are so grateful like you know and each and every day when I'm when I'm home and I and I feel like you know I feel bored I feel like you know like I want to give up because there's days when we all feel like we want to give up right. I just remember the opportunities that I have and how hard my mom and dad they, they were to come to Canada and I'm not just going to sit there and just be normal right. I wasn't made to be normal I wasn't made to fit in I was made to stand out and You're that's exactly what I'm going to do straight up greatness <laughs> for sure for sure now I mean going down there helping you know helping the, the kids down there you know coming up here doing it are there any differences that you see or any similar that fall along the lines of that when you're helping out those over there versus those over here you know what there's a there's a big difference to tell you the truth right 
because those kids back home when I was helping them, like they were like very respectful. Mm-hmm. Um, they were very like just well, wanted to learn and stuff like that. And then, you know, and in Canada, it, it's not like that. Like a mm-hmm. lot of the kids out here, like they're not respectful. Like they just like walk past you, like smelling like marijuana or mm-hmm. like you know, or just like give you attitude. And just back home is so different. Those kids, those kids are so like everything you give them, they're so appreciative of it. Right. Like I gave a kid like like um. Two dollars right. in Canadian money, but in Ghana it's one dollar, and the right. kid was so happy. Like you just seen the kid's face. Like if you give a, if you give a kid down here um two dollars, this guy will be like, I can't even buy mansions with this. Like, <laughs> well, like what do you give me this kind of money, right? Yeah, so you yeah. know, it's just like the different the way that people are raised. Uh, you know, back home in Africa is is you know is, is a lot about respect. Like even when you right. see your elders, you gotta respect them. So. It's a big, 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 big difference. Like, those kids back home in Africa, they're hungry. I'm mm-hmm. not talking about for food. They're hungry, they're hungry for, for success. success. Yes. You feel me? Yeah. <laughs> so you bring them up and you know what's going on, right? Most for of them sure. come here and they smoke the math. Like, bomb, bomb, bomb. Yeah. They ain't playing around, you know what I mean? Definitely. So that's what it is. Definitely. Now, you were also named top under one of the top 25 <clears throat> under 25. Yes, sir. I mean, that takes a lot to even you know, be mentioning Man. that breath. I mean, how did that happen? <clears throat> Man, I, I just... I saw an opportunity, right. and I'm like, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to win this. Right. You know what I mean? Because like, I'm like, all these guys I seen on the website, they were all old. Like I'm talking about like 36 and over. And I'm right. like, you know what? I'm like, I'm gonna try to win this. Like you know what I mean? Right. So I went and I applied, and they told me to um, people have to vote for you, right? And I okay. think I overdid it. Like <laughs> they told Talk me, about they the me? yeah. I just went and I just blasted myself on like social media, and I right. just went to like honestly, literally, I went to like people in the George Brown um um computer lab, and I'm yeah. just telling people vote for me, vote for me, vote for me, vote for me, because I really wanted to win. Yeah. I posted the pictures of the, my flyers. I made flyers for this, eh? <laughs> I made flyers and I posted. it. All around Jane and Finch, and right. up to like my flies are up to like it was there for like a year. Nobody even took up my fly. That's how much respect my community had for me, you know what Definitely. I'm saying? And people used to see me and they're like, Yo, Francis, yo, I seen your flyer, it's still up there, like you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> even though after the award was like a year right. over, like right. you know what I mean? So, I won that award, um, b- b- because of the um, the, the what I do in my community, like you know, and when I win these awards, like. I don't win them for me. Like, you right. know, I'm like, I don't win them for me. I don't want none of these awards. I just want to show the kids, especially the youth in my neighborhood, right. what they could do. Like, right. I want these kids to, like, go past me. Like, they have so much potential. Like, there's so much potential and it's so much um, places in Jane and Fish and just the city of Toronto. And I just want these kids to know that if they believe in themselves and if they stay consistent in their goals and if they just keep working hard, like, just think about it. Like, if you're rock bottom already, the right. only way that you got to look right now is up right. so you have nothing to lose you just like to work hard work consistently and to all those kids out there that play basketball if you put the same effort that you put in practicing in basketball if you put that effort in school right you'll be you'll be deadly all right all the hood smarts that you guys have out there if you use it in school like when i went to school i was very competitive like i used to ask my friend or whoever is next to me i'm like yo what's your grade what did you get like you got hired at me i'm trying to beat you next time like you know what i mean that's how competitive i was i took my the competitive edge from basketball and i brought it into school so mm-hmm. if you do that it makes school it makes learning fun and and you don't get bored and then when you don't get bored and you know what you want to do you go for it definitely man definitely Craziness, man. Greatness. Straight up. Greatness and average Joe, of course. Mixtape coming up at the end of April. Yes, sir. Uh, are there going to be any videos for this? Yes, um, my video is being released um, next week, the Greatness video. The Greatness video is yeah, going to be released. Video. Okay, yes. okay. Now, of course, and with that, I mean, who helped you in terms of the production and everything? <clears throat> Uh, my boy Jariah Pro, um, he helped me. He put the, the, um, the stuff together. Mm-hmm. My boy Adam Ali, um, he also just checked it out for me. You know, he just trying to help me out, promote it properly and stuff right. like that. Shout out to Latoya Forever. Shout out to Dookie Dukes, uh, my brothers. You know, what I mean, everybody out there. You know, Helen Ojo, Mr. Dupuy. Right. So much shout outs. I could go through the whole gin and fish. I don't want nobody <laughs> getting mad at me. Like, just you know, say everybody. And everybody. Shout out to the <laughs> shout out to the city of Toronto for real. The city of Toronto for you know, select me as one of the torchbearers. Like. You know, I'm not taking this lightly. This is like, you know, this is a great opportunity. Like, you know, everything that I do, like I have one motivation that drives me each and every day. I don't have no kids, but every single day when I do everything, when I go to work, and I mean like people see me on Instagram, they think like I'm having a, a like an easy life. Like yeah. I work hard, you know. Yeah. I work like sometimes in, in, in two days, I work 32 hours. I work 16 hours shifts sometimes. You know what right. I mean? Like I'm working, I'm out here, I'm working hard, but when I get home, I'm still hitting the books. I'm still working hard. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just trying to like I'm not having fun. Like I'm working hard. 
hard. Like you know what I'm saying? Well, I'm, you are having. I'm fun. having fun. I'm <laughs> having fun, but it's war. I'm, I'm working. Right. You know what I mean? Love I'm, what I, I love well. what I do. That's love why I'm still doing what I do. But I'm working. I'm working. For sure. You know what I'm saying so that's what it's about. You know, you gotta do what you love. You know, what I mean, you gotta do what you love. There's so much people out there that go to school. And, and and do stuff that their parents tell them to do and stuff, or right. because they want to make money out of it, and you know, and the worst feeling in the world is waking up and going to work and you don't love what you do. Right. You know what I mean? So I just tell people like, make sure you stick to your heart, do what you got to do, stick to your vision, and don't you ever give up. For sure, for sure. Now you're a motivation to a lot of people. Who are three people in your life that are your motivation, your <clears throat> source of motivation? Woo! My motivations. Oh man, definitely my dad. Number one, my dad is a big source of motivation for me because my dad, like, he used to work, like, I mean, like, work in the factory. Like, I'm talking about he had 14 kids waking up every single day at 5 o'clock. I just, I could just see my dad, like, just with his hand up on the window, just smoking because he was so stressed out. You know what I mean? I see that picture in my head every single time. And I I went to work where my dad works when I was 16. I went there for a summer job. I went there for one day. I swear I left, like, (laughs) in three hours. In three serious. hours, yeah, in three hours I left, like, you know what I mean? So, shout out to my dad, but I got all my hard work, you know, for my dad, because, like, at the age of 13, I was actually working in a factory, you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I looked kind of mature when I, when I was younger, so right. I used to go to TIPS, there's this organization called TIPS, and I was so young that I used to get lost going to work. Oh, I was 13 man. years old, like, you know what I mean? And I, used to, I was going to, I was going to work with, um, uh, with, with people that have kids and right. I was 13 years old and I was going to work in it with safety boots and stuff like you know what I mean right. so my dad like he taught us like yo if you want something go out there and get it like you know I was 13 making money like like working hard like traveling from Toronto to Scarborough don't even know where I'm going right. you know what I mean so my dad is number one number two um, motivation um Damn, I, it's it's hard. I gotta say, my brother, my brother, um, my brother, um, Gideon, because you know, because through all the things that he's been through, he he still like has his head up, like you know, what I mean, he's been through a lot of trouble as well, but he still has his head up, like you know, and people will be like, why is your brother um a source of motivation? But if you see my brother, like his heart is so good, like, and people don't know how good my brother is. My brother's the kind of guy that if you come to my house and your shoes are dirty, right. my brother will wash it for you. That's the kind of guy my brother. My brother is so nice. Mm-hmm. I had I have to shout out my brother for that. You know, he's such an amazing person. Okay. Um, the number three I gotta put on my list. Number three motivational person. Oh man, this is hard. You know, I don't want nobody coming after me. Please, guys. <laughs> <laughs> number three motivational person. Number three, who drives me. Hmm. Man, you know what? The only he- person um, that comes to my head is um, Mr. Dupuy, Mr. Charles okay. Dupuy, um, right. who's one of my basketball coaches. Right. <clears throat> and honestly, like people don't know what, how much he, how much he did for me because when I was in high school, and all the teachers were like looking at this guy, like, "Why are you with this waste guy? Like, you know, what <laughs> I mean? like, like, why do you believe in this guy? Like, right. you know, what I mean, why do you believe in this guy?" And he was still with me, like he was like a, a dad to me for real, to tell you the mm-hmm. truth. Because like when I had no basketball shoes or when the white Air Forces low low ones came out and I needed them for, for for the spring concert right. to dance and I couldn't even dance, like you know, what I mean, like, <laughs> but Mr. Dupuy, like he was there for me, like you know, he he was there for me like a father, so you know. Shout out to Mr. Dupuy each and every day. Like, you know, he like he treats me like a son. So I love him to death. Okay. So. Definitely, man. Definitely. Once again, man, I want to say thank you very much for coming through. Thank much you so much, man. For sure. We're going to get into it real quick with DJ Doctor. But you know what? Yes, Before sir. you go, do promote yourself one more time. We are going to play the <clears throat> Greatness track again. Definitely. But you know what? Just promote yourself. Let the people know what's really good. Definitely. Right? So you could catch me on my website, www.francisatta.com. Catch me on Twitter at Francis Atta. Instagram, Francis Atta the Flip. Anywhere you want to go, Google Francis Atta, you'll find me. I'm like City TV. I'm everywhere in my city. So, you know, <laughs> thank you to everybody for listening, for tuning in. For thank sure. you to all my supporters on YouTube. Um, everybody that supports me, you know, I really love you guys. I appreciate you. Shout out to Adam Ali, Latoya Forever, Femi, Dookie Dukes, the whole nine. Um, um, H-A, um, what's it called? H N I C, you know. Thank you guys for everything. I appreciate it. You know, I'm then that that's it. You know, shout out to everybody. The Panam game is gonna be tore up. Shout out to see the Toronto. Thank you to everybody for Once supporting Panam games. Once Francis starts running, everybody's gonna start running. <laughs> I expect everybody to be there, um, J- July eight, July eighth. You know, I hopefully I'm praying that is is in Jane and Finch in Driftwood. Hopefully that's where he's gonna be because that's they, my home. Have they actually told you? They, they, but they never told me. But I'm I'm, I'm assuming that's where he's gonna be because. I told them that it has to be in Jane <laughs> and I'm promoting Jane and Finch, right. so 
like even if I'm not the Jane and Fitch one, I'm still gonna go to the Jane and Fitch one because I right. told everybody I'm gonna be at the Jane and Fitch one. So I hope he's at the Jane and Fitch one because yeah. imagine how that's gonna be, right? Yeah, you know what I mean? Shout out to the city of Toronto, John Tory. Shout out to you yesterday for you know for that beautiful inter- introduction. You know what I mean? Let's keep the city moving. You know what I mean? If anybody wanna talk, you know, Twitter me, Instagram me. I'm here. Like you know, I'm here for everybody. So you know, thank you to everybody. And my last shout out, I gotta give yeah, a shout out to sure. God. You know, the man Amen above. Thank you, God, for everything that you do for us. So bless. Amen. Amen. With that said, DJ Doctor is in the building. Let's get it. Royalty Radio. We'll be back right after this. It's Royalty.